I'm sure you guys have already figured out, I like React quite a bit, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its problems. There's one that is pretty big that we can't ignore, the re-render problem. Here is a video that Aiden made showcasing how bad re-renders are on a pretty popular site you might've heard of. It's called GitHub. As you scroll up and down the page, all of those flickers are components re-rendering as you navigate. And that's not only not good, it's pretty bad. And we need to talk about it as well as how to fix it. But first, a real quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Posthog, and I am so thankful these guys exist. I've been using them for years, way before they ever sponsored me, and there's a reason. The reason is that analytics kind of suck, and they just don't. I have tried every analytics platform, and I've had a hell of a time with it. And they're not just product analytics, by the way. They're in a whole in one suite of product tools. Everything from feature flags to surveys to AI engineering, it's so useful, and I'm starting to play with the other things more they know what they're doing. I usually show off this graphic on the site because it shows their vibe, but the pricing shows it even better. More than 90% of companies using Posthog are using it for free. The amount of stuff they give you for free is insane. I really don't get how these guys make money, especially because like the whole thing's open source. You can self-host it if you want to, but I don't think you're going to bother because their cloud platform is really cheap and really good as well. They're what I use for all of my products. No exaggeration. I've been using them for years. They're the easiest recommendation in the world. If you don't believe me, give it a shot. I think you'll be surprised. Check them out today at soydev.link slash posthog and make sure to tell them that Theo sent you. Anyways, quick bias check before we go any further. Aiden built a company that makes it easier to make your React apps not so slow. And I'm an investor in said company, Million Lint. Cool crew. Account for the bias. These are problems I've talked about before and I'll continue talking about in the future. We'll get there when we get there. Right now, we need to focus on how bad this is or according to some people like Kitsa, isn't. 99.9% .9 of people won't notice anything. Re-rendering is fine. Eh, I fall somewhere in between here. The first thing we need to understand is what even is a re-render? Is this an element reappearing on the page or is this some other thing? Just got linked an awesome blog post by our friends over at Million about why this works this way in React. The virtual DOM was created to address performance issues caused by the frequent manipulation of the real DOM. Again, if React just checks everything from where the state changes down, that has real performance impact. And you can't just update every single element when you change the top nav's state. You can't re-render every single element. So in order to keep that from destroying you, the virtual DOM was created as a representation so that they can identify what does not doesn't need to be updated. So if we have this React component numbers, has foo bar, baz, as a child, child of bar, and then another boo here. When React renders this component, it will go through the process of diffing, checking the changes and reconciliation, which is updating the DOM as a result of the changes that it finds. So we have the current virtual DOM. We moved some things. The virtual DOM now looks like this. But if there is nothing in the real DOM that actually changed, then we don't need to actually apply those changes. Okay, so we have the current virtual DOM. We have the new virtual DOM, which is the state that we're getting to. And if we go through the steps here, we check, did this change? No, cool, continue. Did this change? Yes, updated in the real DOM. Did this change? Yes, it's gone, remove it from the real DOM. Did this change? Yes, it's gone, remove it from the real DOM. Did this change? Yes, update it. But we make the new state, we compare it to the old one, and then we manually update the different things on the page. So if you have a state change up here, that's like a use state call, and that changes which elements are rendered, this happens for those elements to choose which ones actually change in the DOM. But if nothing changes, you're just doing these checks for no reason. And that's what people mean usually when they say re-render. They don't mean unnecessary changes happening to the DOM. They mean unnecessary checks happening between the current virtual DOM and the new virtual DOM. And that's an important thing to understand. To help better demo this and how you can detect it, I made a quick demonstration repo. Link in the description if you want to play with it. This is a simple React app where I have a color picker, a counter, and this component that happens to be really slow because it renders a ton of stuff dynamically in the JavaScript code. And if I click this counter, you'll notice it's not just this increasing. We also have color picker re-rendering and we have that slow component as well. And if I hammer this, you'll see how often everything is re-rendering. In this case, it's not too bad because we're just clicking a single button and every click changes it very slightly. If we go to the code, we can see why this is happening. I have my demo component, and in here we have both the count and the color state 
that we have defined and we pass the getter and the setter down. Well, it's not really a getter, it's the value. We pass the value and the setter down to these child components, the color picker and the counter, which means if counter changes, everything else here has to be checked because that's the way React works. State goes from the top down. So if state changes really high up, we have to check everything as we go down. The solution to this usually is memoization, where you would memoize the individual pieces in order to make sure that they aren't only rendering when their props change, which is what most people think React does. They think that if the props didn't change, React doesn't check, but that's not the case. React by default always assumes something might have changed and re-renders just in case. You have to tell React not to re-render with memoization. And that is so not fun that we basically just don't do it. I'll be honest, if you look through my code bases, the amount of instances of memo is, it's low. I tend to not bother because usually my stuff is simple enough that it doesn't matter. And if it isn't, then I re-architect it so it is. Here's where things start to get fun though. This is an example that was intentionally made to be a bit brutal, largely inspired by Hux Pro, who used to be on the React team for a project that we'll touch on momentarily. If I open the color picker, this is an input that you can drag around. If I just click somewhere, it's fine. But watch what happens when I drag. Do you see that lag? That lag is happening because of the slow component here. If I just go and comment out the slow component, it flies because there's much less work happening. The problem is that the slow component takes a real amount of time to render. If we go to it here, we have the large array, which is length 10,000. And here we go through each of those 10,000 elements and make a new div for them. That is not easy to handle compute wise. Like that's a real amount of work. And if we have to rerun this work every single time the input changes, that sucks. The solution here would be to memoize this component, not use memo, but react.memo. So we're telling React, hey, you don't need to recheck that all of the time. But there is a better solution. I would love to show you because it's something that we don't talk about enough. And for whatever reason, if I make a video about it, nobody cares. I just tricked you guys into watching a React compiler video. This actually said at the top, React compiler demo originally. And now if we go back here, notice that nothing, nothing, zilch, not a zero, is re-rendering now because the React compiler memoized all of the children for me. I no longer have to worry. The code did not change. I did not change a single line of code in the project. All I did was turn on the compiler and the problem's just gone. It just flies now. That's so cool. It's so cool that the React compiler is smart enough to add the right memoization, add the right barriers, add the right things. You don't need to add memo to your code anymore. The ultimate goal here is that use memo and react.memo are no longer things you need to have in your code base at all. I could DIY what this does if I want to. Let me go and comment out the compiler here. So if we take a slow component and we wrap it with react.memo, which is different from useMemo. useMemo is a hook to stabilize a value. React.memo is a wrapper to stabilize a component. Now that we have the real slow component wrapped with react.memo, that element no longer gets re-rendered when it doesn't need to. And we can do the same for other things here as well. We can take the counter button and wrap it the exact same way. Const counter button is react.memo. And now, it's still re-rendering because it's getting a prop, I think. Can we fix that one? Aha. Since counter button takes a function that we defined here, this function being defined here means it's not memoized. So we'd have to change this to be use callback. So if we take const handle counter click and do that, and we have this be use callback. Now, if I pass this there, it is a stable value. And now it won't re-render unnecessarily. You might be noticing how unnecessarily tedious all of these things are. I have screwed up three times just trying to show you how you do this yourself. The amount of these little things you have to double and triple check in order to make sure you're not re-rendering unnecessarily, it's obnoxious. And all it takes to screw it up is to pass an object in line like this. So hello world. Now that I've put this here, this object gets defined on every re-render. It's now a new object every time it re-renders. So React has to assume it changed and do the re-render. That one change brought back all of the lag. 
And I am positive everyone here, myself included, has innocently made a change like this in the past, not realizing that it's going to break everything for them. The magic of React Compiler is that it doesn't make those mistakes. You can just put this inline code right where you want to, there. I'm gonna kill this now. And it just does what you expect it to. I can put an unstable object here and it just behaves. In this version, everything's re-rendering. But if I go and turn on the compiler again, it just works. It's dope. I think a lot of the excitement around the React compiler died out because when you look at it in benchmarks, it doesn't seem incredible. The reality is that the React benchmarks were all built as optimized as possible. They did all the little things I just did there to show how powerful the results can be. But since the React code in those demos is already really well optimized, compiler doesn't do a whole lot. But as we've hopefully seen by now, the real world is not as well optimized. Like here's Pinterest. To Pinterest's credit, masonry layouts are not easy, but re-rendering whenever you scroll any amount, that's not good for anyone. It drops as low as 60 FPS on a really high-end MacBook, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. A MacBook like that should be able to render at 120 without issue. And if this was just like one or two sites, that'd be one thing, but like, Every site has these problems. Here's DoorDash dropping to one FPS at times when you move things like you toggle the delivery and pickup setting. It's insane. It's actually insane how slow a lot of these things are. And a bunch of this is just because they don't make sure the elements aren't being triggered. Oh no, not Twitch. Yes. We know I, I was good about memorization at Twitch. When it mattered, it cared. I didn't write this code, but oh God, the scroll. Uh, so close, but so far. I love Aiden hopping in here. Twitch's web client is big. It's it's one of the biggest, most terrifying code base I've ever worked in. I'm thankful it runs at all at this point. Ah, that was good to see. Now, I'm sure you're curious, how are we getting these visualizations? I have good news. It's comically easy. You just include the unpackage URL for the React scan project. And now you get this on your project. Very easy to set up in dev, even relatively easy to set up in production. Makes it super quick to see what is and isn't re-rendering. React's extension for dev tools is useful for diving deep into what's causing a re-render, but not just to quickly visualize that one happened. And I have found React Scan to be a very fun little tool. If you wanna give it a shot yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. And if you want help making sure that your stuff runs as well as possible, you should check out the other things the Million team is working on. Do you not have a link to Million like at the top here? I love that you're not like over plugging your company, Aiden, but I guess that's my job as an investor. Check out Million. It was originally an alternative runtime for React, but that's not a realistic solution. Now it is everything else you need to make your React sites way faster. Really cool project. It tells you in your editor when your browser has an element that's slow. Check it out. I have a video about this stuff already. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It is pretty cool that they just show you in your editor and with their extension, what is taking more time, why you have a next paint that's slow, all that stuff. You get the idea. Hopefully this helps you all make your apps perform even better. I know that React might have a re-render problem, but there's a lot of effort going into solving it. And honestly, you should probably just turn on the compiler. So let me know what you think and if you can run the compiler on your code base. And until next time, peace nerds.